Death. The inevitable option. Across the globe, it's as much taboo as it is sacred. From culture to culture, it is feared, revered, and celebrated. Death from unnatural means is different, though, and throughout the world, taking one's own life is ubiquitously sour. Throughout history, the morality and right to take one's own life has been fiercely debated by both governments and religious institutions. Within modern medicine, euthanasia has brought release from immense suffering and given patients some control over death when it is imminent. Does the debate over suicide change when the individual is terminally ill and the quality of life in question is disastrously low? And do the terms of one's life justify their right to death by their own hand? Greek philosopher and father of medicine, Hippocrates, was the first to mention physician-assisted death in his Hippocratic Oath, saying, I will give no deadly medicine to anyone if asked, nor suggest any such counsel. In the 1600s, Sir Francis Bacon was the first to coin the term euthanasia, which is defined as the painless killing of a patient who is suffering from an incurable and painful disease or an irreversible coma. There are two categories of what is commonly referred to as just euthanasia. Those are physician-assisted death and voluntary euthanasia. Both are done with the assistance of a medical professional, but the first is carried out under one's own capacity and the latter is carried out by the physician. Famously, Dr. Jack Kevorkian was convicted of second-degree murder and served eight years in prison for administering voluntary active euthanasia to approximately 130 patients. Physician-assisted death is the only legal form of euthanasia in parts of the United States. Washington, Oregon, California, Colorado, Vermont, and Washington, D.C. are states that all allow physician-assisted death. Many advocacy groups, such as Death with Dignity, have been influential in passing legislation in currently legal states. The states of Oregon and Washington, as well as Washington, D.C., have signed Death with Dignity Acts. Unitarian Universalists are among the only religious groups to advocate for the right to self-determination during death. European euthanasia laws are equally, if not more, diverse than the United States. Denmark, the Netherlands, and Luxembourg all allow active euthanasia, and most other countries have affirmative legislation for passive euthanasia and assisted death. This all still begs the question, is there a moral difference between killing someone and letting them die? Is it ever right to end the life of a terminally ill patient who is undergoing severe pain and suffering? And under what circumstances is prescribing one's own death justifiable? I was often trying to do things that uh, that were actually not possible to do. I was, I was trying to cure and fix problems that could not be cured or could not be fixed. And you start to realize that maybe the goal of care for such patients should be on comfort and on, on improving quality of life rather than simply quantity of life and fixing every medical problem that you can find. Sandy Trunzer is a terminally ill patient under the care of Dr. Downer. Physician-assisted death is legal in Canada, and she's choosing to passively end her life under the care of Dr. Downer. Ideally, I would like to have the pacemaker turned off in the environment of the hospice, our local hospice, and in an ideal world, to be put under palliative sedation immediately to allow my passing, be a cardiac failure. You know, I understand it could take hours, could take 10 days or so to pass, but to be free of that discomfort. There are numerous groups that are openly opposed to euthanasia and physician-assisted death. Religious groups in opposition include Catholics, Jews, and Latter-day Saints. Dr. Joel Zivit is a professor of anesthesiology and surgery at the Emory School of Medicine. He is a physician in opposition of active euthanasia. Now, medical assistance in dying is actually configured to be quite a lot like lethal injection. It's the same kind of medications that are used sometimes in a very similar fashion. 13th century Italian priest Thomas Aquinas gave three distinct arguments against taking one's own life. Everything naturally loves itself, every part belongs to a greater whole, and that life is a gift from God, and anything taking it besides him is sinful. Later, 18th century Scottish Enlightenment philosopher David Hume asserted that human life depends upon the general laws of matter and motion and that it is no encroachment on the office of providence to disturb or alter these general laws. Well-known German philosopher Immanuel Kant was generally against the notion of moral suicide, saying that a man might find himself so placed that he can continue living only under circumstances which deprive life of all value. But this is the only example that has given the world the opportunity of defending suicide. So in the Kantian picture of autonomy, 
it's not so clear we have a right to take our own lives. He says we don't. Whereas on contemporary understandings of autonomy, it seems to go without saying that I own my own life, my life is my creation, and therefore I have a right to take it. This rise of autonomy in uh, medical decision making, uh, I think is a generational trend that will continue. And I think that presenting options about uh, end of life care, including uh, euthanasia and assisted suicide is an extension of our desire to give people more control over the types of care they receive. As public opinion changes and legislation is rewritten, we may see a mass embrace of euthanasia. We may also see less of a need for it as medical technology continues to improve. Regardless, for the time being, many will continue to make the pilgrimage to legal lands to seek relief from their suffering.